Hi everyone, this is Miss Segovia and we're going to walk through how to do the window foldable for the Punnett squares. So in this one, you're going to take the worksheet that has this particular picture on it and cut out the picture and then also cut out the four definitions. I'm going to give mine a little bit of a backing that's more solid. So I've also gone and cut a sheet of color paper, one to be the size of this center section right here, just slightly larger than it. And then I've also cut four squares that are going to go on the backs of my windows. So let's go ahead and um, fold this in the way that it's going to be, so you can kind of see why I cut those the way I did. Uh, you can use a ruler to measure out the sizes of the squares, and you don't have to do the color square part on it. I just like it because it makes it look a little bit cleaner, and you don't get so much of the bleed through on your writing. Because what you're going to do on the outside of this is you're going to put some key definitions so that you are reinforcing that you know those topics and it also um, will help reference what we're doing on the inside. So I've got my little four square window foldable and then I've also got my little blue squares that I cut out earlier to fit. These by the way I cut to be two inches by three inches. That's uh, the size of those doors. Well slightly smaller than them. They're actually a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on the backs of my doors with my glue stick. You can use tape as well if that suits you better. And I'm going to stick these down. So here goes the first one, the second one, third one, and my fourth one. So now why am I doing this other than to make it look absolutely adorable? Well, on the outside here, I am going to put my vocabulary terms. So those four smaller ones that you cut out, like heterozygous, homozygous, genotype, and phenotype, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to put a little slash of glue at the top, and let's go ahead and put heterozygous up here. And you can do them in any order, it really doesn't matter, because we're just focusing on what those words are. Heterozygous, here's my homozygous. phenotype and genotype. So you need to put the definitions on here. You can go and use the definitions off your vocabulary cards or you could put it in your own words. So I'm going to put it in my own words right now and you are welcome to use my own words if you uh, prefer. So for the first one, heterozygous. Heterozygous is when the alleles for a trait are different. So that's like saying if we have big T, little t for my trait. Homozygous is when two alleles for a trait are the same. And so that's like big T, big T, or little t, little t. The phenotype is what you see for the trait. So in this case, um, for using T's, that might be tall or short. It could be color like yellow or green. And then genotype is the allele combination of an organism. Literally fall off the press. So now that you've got the outside done with the definitions, let's take a look at the inside. They're practice problems, yay! So let's go ahead and um, work them together. If you want to pause the video and work them on your own and then come back and check, that's actually the preferred method. But um, here we go. So some trolls have one eye. So that could be the biggie, biggie, or big, little. So that must be the dominant trait. While others have two, littley, littley. Two heterozygous one-eyed trolls are crossed. What is the expected genotype ratio of one eye of two eyed offspring and the expected phenotype ratio? So let's do our cross. They told us here we have two heterozygous one eyed trolls. So that means they are big E, little e. So I'm going to put 
one parent on top, big E, little e, and the other parent on the side, big E, little e. Now I just go ahead and work the Punnett square. So we could have an offspring that's big, big. We might have an offspring that's big, little. Another that could be big, little. Or we could have an offspring that's little, little. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean that they're always going to have four offspring, and this is exactly what they'll have. This is just looking at the odds of something. So if they had one offspring, what would be the expected, expected genotype ratio? Well, the offspring we have of genotype, we could have, um, there's a one out of four chance we're big, two out of four chance we're heterozygous, and one out of four chance that we're homozygous recessive. The phenotype ratio, on the other hand, since we're showing complete dominance, since big, big, since if it has the big gene, it'll be dominant with one eye, um, and it has to have the two littles to be a two-eyed monster. Three out of four percent, three out of four chance that it'll be big, big, with a one out of four chance that it will be a two-eyed offspring. So we would say we have a one to two to one ratio on the genotype and a three to one ratio on the phenotype. That's a good question too. In unicorns, having a, dom having a white horn, big W, is dominant to having a brown horn, little w. Two heterozygous unicorns are crossed. What is the probability that the offspring will have a white horn? So they told us again too that we have a heterozygous unicorns, two heterozygous mating. So that means that they are going to be big W, little w, big W, little w. So again, we'll work the punnet. Big, 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 little, big, little, little, little. What is the probability that the offspring will have a white horn? So if we look here, the white horn again was the dominant trait. So if it has a big W, it's going to be a white horn. So one, two, three out of four boxes have the white horn. So three-fourths, or if we wanted to do that in percentage, it would be 75% chance of a white Horn. On question number three, in griffins, the allele for black feathers, big B, is dominant over silver feathers, little b, which are recessive. Two black griffins are crossed and have a silver offspring. What is the genotype of the parents? Well, if silver is recessive, and both parents were black, which is dominant, that means they had to have the recessive gene somewhere. And so the only way that's possible is if the parents are heterozygous. And to show you that, let's take a look. So if we add big B, little b, cross with big B, little b, again, you would end up with a Punnett square that looked like this. And there would be the silver offspring. And so they would have a one out of four chance, or a 25% chance, but so the genotype of the parents would have to be heterozygous to give us a recessive offspring. And finally, number four, a homozygous red dragon, big R, big R, is crossed with a heterozygous red dragon, big R, little r. What are the possible genotypes of the offspring, and what is the possible phenotype of the offspring? So one parent we know is big R, big R, so we do big R, big R, and the other one is heterozygous, big R, little r. So if we work the punnet, we'd have big, 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 little, and big, little. So the possible genotypes, that's looking at just the genetics. Our two possible genotypes, we could have big R, big R, or big, little. And what is the possible phenotype of the offspring? Since none of the offspring are homozygous recessive, that means little r, little r, they all carry the dominant trait. And our dominant trait, again, is red. So all of our offspring would appear as red. So kids, that is how you work the inside of the little Punnett square, just a simple little exercise. Again, you should have your definitions on the outside, and you'll stick it into your notebook like this. Thanks.